ชมครับผมอยู่กับคุณจอห์นเพียนนะครับซึ่งก็ดูแลในส่วนของ LPGA ในโซนเอเชียทั้งหมดชอห์น thank you for talking with us no problem uh, now this you're the right guy to talk to because uh, we want to talk about the LPGA and, and its involvement in Asia particularly now uh, since you oversee that uh, let's start with Honda LPGA Thailand this is sure. a special year being the 10th th anniversary sure. and all it's a good success isn't it absolutely this is one of the events that we believe every event should look like. So when we first get together with whether it's a sponsor or the government officials, we look at this tournament and say, A, this is what we want the tournament to look like, and B, this is a type of impact we want the tournament to have not only on the golf but to generally people in that country. So when you look at this event, you may have participated at the small um, playground ceremony earlier today. You right. look at number of Thai players that are playing on the tour today on the LPGA tour. So this is the type of impact we're looking for. So when you when you say it's a success or it's a it's a model for other tournament to to look at, uh, what is the measurement? What is your your index that you're looking at uh, as a measure of success? Obviously, the the continuous sponsorship from Honda has to be a big big part. Absolutely, but you look at things like the number of Thai players today. Okay. When the LPGA first staged this event in conjunction with Channel 7 and Honda back in 2006, we had zero members from Thai. Mm. So in other words, there were no LPGA players from Thailand, right. but today we have 13. Mm. This past year in our qualifying school, we had 10 players entering from Thailand. That's the number we would like to see. Our TV number is very strong in Thailand okay. through, this, through this event. Our fan experience, fan engagement, our website visitors are up every year. So you see the type of impact Channel 7 and Honda is having, not only on the LPGA, but really the global landscape of women's golf. Mm. And, and of course, the, it attracts quality players as sure. well, correct? Sure. Because sure. In the it was set up to, to uh, be inclusive of top players only. And from talking to players, interviewing players, it seemed they genuinely look forward to coming here. Absolutely. You, I mean, you look at this venue, it doesn't get much better than that. This year, I believe we have top 55 or the top 60 players in the world here this week that's been consistently good every year. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about the golf. It's about what the, the country of Thailand, the nation of Thailand offers. Mm -hmm. We love going to Dusit Thani Hotel. We okay. love going to get a foot massage. We love the food. <laughs> we, have, we love everything, the hospitality that Thai people show to the LPJ. And that's been done every year for the last 10 years. It's really tough. Everybody's now got into the routine of getting to Thailand and getting to the airport, getting to the car, getting to the course, and everybody knows what to do, where to go, mm -hmm. you know, what to have. So uh, this is a type of impact we're looking for, and this is why this consistently produced the top field every year. So it's safe to say that on the top LPGA player, they would actually have this week marked off as, we're going to Thailand. No doubt about it, no doubt. Okay. Absolutely. Now, as far as uh, Channel 7 and Honda goes, uh, they, they have done a lot throughout the years, not only the, the competition week, but uh, they have done a lot to promote and, and hold up the event. Uh, can, can you give us uh, some comparison as to maybe some other uh, emerging market? Well, you know, like as today, we're playing in seven different countries in Asia with eight events. If you, could, if you include Australia, there would be nine events in eight countries. So we have more countries or, or partners, whether it's Vietnam, whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's different countries that want to get involved with the LPJ. Uh, unfortunately for us, the LPJ today, we no longer, we don't have any more dates mm -hmm. to be able to play. So that's a biggest, that's the biggest challenge for the LPJ. At the end of the day, our goal is to really grow the game. And I understand the LPJ is a business and we want to be profitable, do the things that makes necessary business sense. But the, at the end of the day for us, our biggest goal is to grow the game and growing the infrastructure of women's golf. And today in Asia, there's abundance of opportunities available. Unfortunately, we don't have enough dates in the calendar to be able to play every event at every country. But that's the type of impact that we have had in Asia and our success. Now, typically in, in Thailand, I, I, would, I would go so far as to say in, in Asia, um, golfers in these countries are not in the habit of going to the golf course and watch the pro from the sideline. I mean, a lot of them tend to stay at home and watch it on TV. Sure. Unlike in, in Europe or in America, which you have great turns out, right? But uh, having said that, we see good turnout year in and year out here at Siam Vendee Club. I think you'd be surprised. Actually, I, if I have to compare between US events versus ASA events, I believe we have a better spectator turnout in Asia. Really? I think okay. the number has grown every year. 
if you remember, think back when Aria was competing mm -hmm. and when she was in contention, that's the most people I have ever seen in Thailand mm -hmm. at a golf event. I've been to a men's event in Thailand. I don't think it compares, uh, frankly speaking. So I think we've had impacted a lot of people, a lot of the Thai people, no different in Korea, Japan, and anywhere else we play, but we've had a spectator turnout that's much larger than what we anticipated in the beginning, perhaps larger than what we're seeing in the States, except for a couple of events. Okay, so uh, as far as players, we've seen growth. As far as spectator, we've seen growth. How about in the corporate side, the sponsorship side? Well, you know, LPGA has always needed a corporate champions to be able to carry us through to the point that where we want to get to. And I believe in the last few years, and since really the Mike One has taken over back in 2010, we've gone from events, number of event, from a number of events perspective, we went from 25 to 34 events. Mm -hmm. And in terms of our purse, we're up about 23 million since he took over. Okay. And those are all the numbers that you can speak to the corporate partnerships and, and, and corporate sponsorships and our TV coverage. The reason why they're coming, because our TV coverage is increasing from 220 hours to 410 hours. That's nearly 100% wow. uh, and, and we almost doubled it. So when you look at all these things, you can see the women's golf growing and the sponsorships and partnerships, a component that's just so crucial to our success. And we're seeing an abundance of it today. I personally would go as far as saying, when, when parents come to me, uh, between the, the son, their son and their daughter, I would say your daughter actually have a higher chance of making it on tour than your son, just because of the nature of the professional game. Would you I would, I would kind of go along with that I statement? I would tend to agree with that. I mean, you can look at it. I mean, we look at LPGA and PGA, and we understand the Olympics and all those things, but at the end of the day, I think LPGA, the, the Asian players are outperforming their counterparts on the PGA Tour, mm -hmm. on the LPGA Tour. I mean, you look at different players and who's on the top 10, whether it's a Korean player, a Japanese player, and all the Asian players. So. I would have to agree with your, your assessment, and we're, we're definitely seeing the, the evidence of that today. Sean, I would like to ask you to please take good care of our girls on the LPGA Tour. We've got some really good prospects this year. I absolutely would, yes. Okay, thank you very much. No problem, thank you very much. Thanks. After that, I've been talking to Sean, I've been able to get a lot of ความเคลื่อนไหววงการและการอย่างน้อยก็คือในส่วนของกอล์ฟสตรีในโซนเอเชียนะครับเป็นอะไรที่น่าสนใจมากเพราะเราในฐานะนักกอล์ฟเองเนี่ยจะแค่เล่นลูกลงหลุมอย่างเดียวโดยที่ไม่เข้าใจสัดส่วนอื่นของกีฬากอล์ฟเลยก็น่าเสียดายนะครับมีอีกหนึ่งอาชีพครับที่ข้องเกี่ยวกีฬากอล์ฟแล้วนักกอล์ฟเองเนี่ยอาจจะไม่รู้จักไม่คุ้นเคยว่ามีด้วยซ้ํานะครับซึ่งวันนี้เนี่ยเธอมาพร้อมพูดคุยกับเรานะครับก็คือคุณเคที่มอลเลนหน้าที่ของเธอทํางานให้กับทางด้านเดโรเซอร์เวเกี่ยวกับเรื่องสํารวจว่านักกอล์ฟใช้ไม้กอล์ฟอะไรอย่างไงนะครับวันนี้มอบหมายหน้าที่ให้โปรอุ๋ยไปชวนเคดี้คุยครับค่ะตอนนี้อุ๋ยอยู่กับบุคคลท่านหนึ่งนะคะที่หลายคนอาจจะไม่ได้มองถึงบุคคลที่อยู่ในตำแหน่งนี้นะคะแต่ว่าเขามีความสำคัญสำคัญโดยเฉพาะเลยกับบริษัทอุปกรณ์กอล์ฟเพราะว่าเขามีหน้าที่ส่งมอบข้อมูลจดรวบรวมข้อมูลแล้วก็ส่งมอบให้กับบริษัทของอุปกรณ์กอล์ฟต่างๆซึ่งจะไปใช้ในการมาร์เก็ตติ้งหรือหรือการโฆษณาต่างๆนานาเดี๋ยวเราลองมาคุยกับเขาว่าในสัปดาห์ของ LPGA เนี่ยทุกๆสัปดาห์เขามีหน้าที่และก็หน้าที่ของเขาเนี่ยมีความสำคัญอย่างไร Hi Hello. so tell us again your name and your job for the week and really what your your job Responsibility entails. So my name is Katie, and I work for Daryl Survey, and uh, I pretty much just look at all the players' clubs every week and note what they're playing with, and if they change from week to week, I write mm. all that down. So I believe that it's not just the clubs, right? Um, it's their apparel, yes. their shoes, yes. even the spikes underneath their shoes. Yeah, we even do their hat and the bag and their balls. Everything on a club, what club it is, the shaft, the, shaft, the grip. The, the grip, the model yeah. of each equipment, That's right? Yeah. right? Um, so why is it so important that you have to do this? Um, basically, the manufacturers like to have that information mm -hmm. um, for marketing purposes and um, just to use within the industry. So obviously it's not for the players to know, it's not for the, the viewers at home. Actually, 
some people at home would like to know, um, but they, yes. they usually get to read it in the magazine. That's right. But of course, the magazine will have to come to you for those information, right? That's right. <laughs> so you come in quickly, go out. Yes. On which of the day of the week that you have to work? So we usually just do the first day, which um, is Thursday, Thursday or yep. Friday if it's a three-day event. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, off to do another event. So your job is just on a Thursday morning when they tee off. Yes. Anything before that or after that do no, not matter. That's right. Day. Yeah. So basically we have about 10 minutes for mm -hmm. each group and I have to write down everything in their bag in that, in that 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. sometimes a little pressure to get it all done. <laughs> I know. I was trying to get your attention when you were doing your job and you were like, okay, don't yeah. bother with me right now. And uh, I see you have to take off the head cover yes, just to make yes. sure that it's exactly yes. What they're Write playing. all the details down. Yeah. Do you yeah. ever come across sometimes when the the head cover and the what what's inside don't match? Sometimes, yeah. Right? So always have to take the cover off to That's make right. sure what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Usually the caddies know um, their job. So once they put the bag on the tee box, they just throw the head covers yes, in the, yes. in the, on the ground so that they're very helpful. They're, and I yeah. and I see them every week. The mm -hmm. same players and same caddies. So they always try to help me out. Yep. And do the players change their equipment from week to week? Um, yeah, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Which, which one of the clubs that uh, they they usually switch? Uh, maybe driver and putter are driver commonly, putter. but a lot of times, depending on the different course setup, they might be changing between mm -hmm. a wood and a hybrid, mm -hmm. depending on the wind or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And uh, who comes to you for these information? Um, pretty much all the manufacturers. Like Yep. Name it, title is. Yep. Uh, I'm Fujoy, Who, Callaway. Whoever's, whoever's interested and, and wants the information will contact the company and they uh -huh. can get whatever and they want. And obviously, these are very Im Im important information for them. When when we see, you know, when we open a magazine and see, like, oh, so and so is the number one driver on tour this That's week. Right. Yep. Um, and it can change the next week. You know, yes. it could be Tylus this week, it could be Callaway, and then oh, so and so is the number one ball this week, yes. right? So, yes. um, so whatever the players put in, um, put in in play on Thursday, will be the the information that you That's take, right. That's right. and it will be the information that we read on the paper, right? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much for for sharing with us. Uh, your job yeah, and no uh, some of us at home don't even know but now they do yeah. um, and uh, you travel with the tour every yes. week yes yeah. with the company covers most of the major tours mm -hmm. around I personally stick with the LPGA yeah, you stick with yeah. the LPGA and obviously you have other colleagues that go on the Asian tour European yes. tour okay right. um, so they uh, viewers at home they can look next time in a magazine or yep. news or advertisement you know they, they know now that those information came from exactly you. Yeah. <laughs> well thank you very much for yeah. your time and uh, I think your job's done now I think so maybe you take can, a break yeah, take a break get off <laughs> enjoy and, uh, Thailand that's right and and go on to the next event คุณเคธีเนี่ยก็มีบทบาทสําคัญที่เขาจะรวบรวมสถิติที่จะไปใช้กับการรายงานใช้ไม้แล้วแล้วทําได้ดีเนี่ยเค้าก็อาจจะได้เงินมากขึ้นซึ่งบริษัทเหล่านี้ก็ต้องมาเช็คข้อมูลกับกับบริษัทของ KT